Oh boy, I think this could get interesting. I'm not gonna tell you what time I'm at yet, but it's a pretty good number. This is way freaking faster than I thought it was. But I also wanted to show the right software to go with your hardware is key. Maybe you want to think about that before you drop a bunch of money on something. Hey guys, how are you all doing? Really? That's just great. Well, you know what? It's been about a week with the new iMac Pro and real talk for a second here. Yeah, it's not my personal machine. It's someone's machine at the office. Shh. So what I did was I snuck into their cubicle and I'm going to do some tests on it to show you how fast this bitch is and maybe how not fast it is depending on what software we're running. So I have loaded up these folders on an iMac Pro and a MacBook Pro. The iMac Pro is from late 2017 and the MacBook Pro is from late 2013. There was a big gap here and I'm going to be pitting them against each other. So we're going to start with a few things here and we're going to run some other benchmark software as well. Starting with Cheetah 3D. We're going to load up some models. All the textures are missing. This is great. Um, I'm going to have to relink that stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this 3D render on this iMac Pro and then on the MacBook Pro and do a little speed test. So what we have here is we're going to be rendering 1920 by 1080 four by four anti-aliasing max samples with a 0.05 tolerance. Reflections, lighting, everything, and boom. Okay, that didn't work. I clicked the wrong button. Boom, here we go. We're going to render a still frame. So as you can see here, it is, oh, you know what? The sky might not actually be calculated. That might be a bit of a problem right there. Sorry, was an idiot. Just had to relink a few things. So the sky is actually uh, being generated as an HDRI. So I threw that back in there, it was missing. And we're gonna let the computer paint. While this is going, I'm just gonna brief you. If you have not seen the previous video where I unbox and set up this beast, I recommend checking that out. In summary, this iMac Pro is equipped with a 10-bit P3 display and a 14-core Xeon W. And along with that, it features Radeon Vega chips. I believe this is the Radi Radeon Vega 60 4 with uh, 16 gigabytes of dedicated video memory, I believe, or whatever kind of video memory it is. I don't know, all these technical things. And uh, did I say 14 cores already? Oh, yeah, 18, no, uh, 128 gigs of RAM. There you go. So I think that is more than enough. We'll see uh, how fast this thing goes. And we are done. The render clocked in at 139 seconds on the iMac Pro. Now, let's switch over to the MacBook Pro and see what that can do. Whoosh, here we are at the MacBook Pro. We're going to run the same test in Cheetah 3D first. So right now you can actually see it's chugging along quite nicely. Now this is a computer that is over four years older than the iMac Pro and it's a laptop. So it's all mobile chipsets and components. So you, you'd think it would be way slower than that 14 core workstation. But not necessarily always the case. This is actually not as slow as I thought it would be. So, it seems to be doing okay, but once it hits that wood, yeah, that's those are bump maps and specular maps. It's going to start slowing down a little bit, so we'll see uh, how long it actually takes. All right, so the render clocked in at almost 361 seconds, so we're looking at, yeah, almost three times as fast. Or, excuse me, three times as slow. So the iMac Pro looks like it's rendering three times faster than this MacBook Pro is, which is rather impressive. And again, that will vary depending on what kind of stuff you're rendering, but good. All right, the iMac Pro is pretty darn fast. Let's move on. So this next test is especially useful to people wanting to do video. You know anybody? Probably me. It's by Blackmagic, and coincidentally, I am shooting this episode with the Blackmagic camera as well. So this thing will report how fast the M2 SSD is inside this iMac Pro. Let's have a look. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna choose the largest stress test I can find. It's gonna write a five gigabyte file in all these different specifications down here and test the speed and run. Let's see how fast this thing can go. So the first test clocked in at almost 3000 megabytes per second on the right and about 2500 megabytes per second on the read. Now we're at about 2700 and about 2500. Wow, this is way freaking faster than I thought it was. Uh, but yes, this is using a very, very fast PCI Express M2 form factor SSD. So it is, it, it just screams. So as you can basically see, we'll stop it now. We don't even need to continue it. At the right, which is the left, haha, -ha, we clocked in at almost three gigabytes per second of speed. And with all these different formats down here for video, we can easily play them back in real time no issues whatsoever on this iMac Pro. Now, let's take a look at the MacBook Pro. So here we are. 
Same settings, same location, 5 gig file, and boom, let's run the test. So the initial write test clocks in at about, it's sinking actually a little bit, just under 400 megabytes a second it looks like. 388? Okay, we're at 388 for the write, and we're at 787 for the read. Now, this uses an M2 form factor SSD as well, but it does not have the same bandwidth as the iMac Pro, so this comes to no surprise. We're getting about, eh, I'm not going to do the math in my head, but like an eighth or a ninth of the speed on the right compared to the iMac Pro. So, as you can see, there is a huge difference with the two machines here. Sweet mother of Abraham Lincoln. The uh, font did not sync. I was using <laughs> the Crazy Ken branded font, and oops, I forgot I don't have that on this system. So, I'm going to have to change everything to, what is that, like... Courier or something? I have no freaking idea. Anyway, here is the Adobe Premiere Pro test. So, I have some footage here from a documentary I recently shot about this abandoned theater. It's pretty fun, but I shot it at 422 4K 10-bit, so it's pretty beefy. So what I did was I imported all that footage and I applied a color grading through Lumetri of 50% saturation increase and then I overlaid some text just to give the system a little more complexity. And as you can notice, it's scrubbing pretty freaking smooth and it's at full resolution over here. But you'll notice the yellow bar indicates none of this is pre-rendered. That's because we're going to do a test about export time. So let's open up our settings. I'm just going to do a stock H.264 export and we're not going to queue this, we're just going to go right from Premiere. So, looks like we're at about a um, minute 30 seconds remaining, and at 6%. The countdown has begun. As you can see, it's chugging along there, and we just passed 56 seconds, and just passed the minute mark. It looks like we're about halfway done, one minute in. 95, and then my favorite part, when it gets stuck at 100% for like 5 minutes. Let's see how long that takes. Alright, 100%. 100%. It's probably writing to the... There we go. And time. 2 minutes and 2 seconds. So... That whole thing rendered in two minutes and two seconds. And actually, I forgot to mention this earlier, the actual, like, length of the video is about two minutes and 15 seconds. So it looks like we averaged about one minute of video equaled one minute of export time. So that was Premiere Pro on the iMac Pro. Now let's take a look at Premiere Pro on the MacBook Pro and then something a little special, Final Cut Pro on the MacBook Pro to see maybe software optimizations are key to performance and it's not all about hardware on paper. Specs aren't everything, and I think I showed that in a previous comparison I did, but we're going to take a look at it one more time comparing to the iMac Pro. So here we are again with the same footage, same format, same everything, and now we're going to render it with the same settings in Premiere Pro and see how fast it is, or how slow it is. Now initially, you'll see it's definitely not scrubbing nearly as fast as the iMac Pro was able to. So already it looks like it's going to be a lot slower, but... That's kind of obvious, but how much slower? Let's find out. Three, two, one. And we are off to the races. I know I'm just stating the obvious, but yes, we are definitely clocking in at a lot slower. We are already at three minutes and we're only about a third of the way through. But again, it's pretty obvious that the iMac Pro is gonna be faster in all these tests, but what I wanna show is how much faster it actually is with the time and the technology changes between the two computers. But again, stick around because you may be surprised. I haven't tested this yet, but I think a change of software makes a huge difference and speed isn't judged solely on pretty specs on a piece of paper. So we're gonna run the same test in Final Cut Pro and see how fast that is. Even though it's on much older hardware, we'll see what it clocks in at. This program is brought to you by Black Apple Stickers because they're probably going on eBay for like $10,000. Anyway, we're still waiting for it to finish. It's about halfway done now. You don't have to watch this whole thing. Well, I'm just going to cut it. What am I talking about? Yes, you do have to watch the whole video. Yeah, you're going to sit here. You're going to watch it. Time keeps on slipping, slipping, slipping into the future. All right, so we just passed the 10 minute and 8 second mark. It looks like the dialog box has 5 seconds left. And then it's going to hang at 100% for a while. And then it is... Oh, there it goes. And... And... Three, two, one, go. There we go. Oh, that was actually pretty perfect. Boom. We clocked in at 10 minutes and 25 seconds. So we're looking at, yeah, the iMac Pro will render in Adobe Premiere Pro about five times faster than this MacBook Pro will. So I think it's safe to say it's a pretty fast machine. But wait, what about that whole software optimization thing I was talking about earlier? Let's run a similar test on the same hardware, but this time using Final Cut Pro as opposed to Premiere Pro. 
let's see what happens. So Final Cut Pro is now loaded up and ready to go on the same hardware with the same footage. As you can see, we're actually able to scrub this really smoothly. We have color grading effects on here, we have the text overlay, and all of it is unrendered. And again, this is 10-bit footage shot at ProRes 422 in 4K, so this is pretty beefy. So as you can see, even just with the change of software... Oh, well isn't that nice? Premiere crashed while I was doing that too. Well, that just kind of drives my point home, but anyway, I love you Premiere, well, kisses. Anyway, so even just with the change of software, we can already notice significant speed improvements. But now, let's do that export test and time it out. Here we go with an H.264 export. Three, two, one, and go. Now another nice thing is this is actually running in the background without me having to cue it or anything, so I could still interact with the project if I wanted to because it just renders in the background, but I don't want to skew the data. So we're just going to leave it untouched and open up the background progress window or background tasks window, as it were. And as you can see, we are already at 15%. I'm going to zoom into those numbers for you. We're about to hit one minute, and as you can see, we're a third of the way done with the entire timeline export and compression into H.264. Oh boy, I think this could get interesting. I'm not going to tell you what time I'm at yet, but it's a pretty good number. Oh man, this experiment is really killing my battery. Rest in peace, battery. A moment of silence. Alright, coming in on the final stretch here. Almost done. Done. It finished before it even got to 100%, because it's just that fast, I guess. So. Here is that amazing number that I was hiding. 2 minutes and 27 seconds. So, it is about 3 times faster on the same hardware than Premiere Pro when it comes to exporting. And you also notice the playback was also smoother. But if you'll notice, Adobe Premiere Pro on the iMac Pro with 14 cores even, exported in about 2 minutes. 2 minutes on the iMac Pro with Premiere Pro, not even two and a half minutes with Final Cut Pro on the older, slower MacBook Pro. It was only a 30 second difference with this computer with Final Cut Pro. So that's kind of one of the points I wanted to drive home. Not only in this tech video log did I want to show how much faster the iMac Pro is and how much faster it's gotten over the years, but I also wanted to show the right software to go with your hardware is key. Because are you going to drop a bunch of money on a faster computer and use unoptimized software that's slow? Maybe you want to think about that before you drop a bunch of money on something. Maybe you just need to use the right software solution. So I'm calling this a win. Good discoveries all around. And I'm curious, do we have any uh, video editors or maybe 3D modelers in the audience? I kind of want to know what you use in terms of your hardware and software configurations and if you're satisfied with the speed or not. We'll see you guys soon, catch the crazy, and pass it on.